everyone we're uh, working on some of the uh, MR2 transmissions today I somehow ended up with seven transmissions five of which are currently open the, this is the E153 transmission for the Toyota MR2 the turbo version of this car so I thought I'd just give you a quick show of all the madness here So this is one of the transmissions that came out. I had these in storage for the last 15 years. This one does not have, as you can see, a VIN plate. It's missing, so we don't have any idea what that came off of exactly, but we do know it's a, an MR2 turbo. That is the seventh one. I've been getting into all these, trying to learn what's going on inside all these transmissions. This is the guts that originally came out of the host transmission that I used to build the Solara transmission that's currently in the car here. So what I did is I took this uh, Solara, I bought this, well actually it came out of a 2000 Camry, I think technically. As I looked up the VIN number plate there, I found it was from a 2000 Camry LE. I think it had about 30,000 miles on it when I bought it about 15 years ago. Probably only has another 10 on it, maybe. This was just a donor MR2 transmission that all I actually wanted was the midsection case, which looks like this. This middle section of the case, the section that actually has the VIN plate. This is the bottom. You can see by the orange line that dictates the bottom section, the middle section, and the top section, which is this. So what I did was back in the day, to drop that into the MR2, this midsection of the case doesn't fit because of the shifting mechanisms, which are different. So all of this madness here is all different. There's, uh, as you'll see, this is the, the end of this whole select shifter shaft and in the for the and that's rear wheel drive so the front wheel drive version of that actually is closed off and the shifter mechanism is actually flipped around in the front wheel drive solara and camry okay so i took the midsection and the top of this one and swapped that onto all of the guts that came out of this late model solara camry transmission this is the old selector for the Solara. They actually insert into the case from the same side, but they put the shifter mechanism on the opposite side of the case. So then what I've been doing is I need to rebuild a transmission to put back in the MR2 for selling it because I don't want to sell my good Solara transmission. So originally what I did is I grabbed my original I think this is it. Yeah, the original 1991 Toyota MR2 with the VIN plate on the case, the midsection case that matches this car. So problem was I opened it up. I figured, okay, I'm just going to replace the synchros, which I have somewhere around here. I actually have a whole brand new set of synchros. Here we go. Because that's the reason these transmissions wear out at all otherwise these things are bulletproof excellent transmissions but the soft brass rings they wear out pretty fast it may have something to do with the oils that people are using in them probably remember me talking about all the oil problems the gl4 versus gl5 and you know 15 years ago i wouldn't have thought that to be as big of a problem and it could be i don't know as much of the history of this as i might need to to go back and look at but for whatever reason, the brass gets super soft on those and it wears out. So literally what happened was I decided to get into my original transmission knowing that I, I thought I remembered having synchros that were worn, but let's take a look at them real quick. So actually you can't really see too much of the synchros. You can kind of see there. I'll have to get these apart and show you. They don't look terrible, but it's really, really hard to determine what is where on these. So, but anyway, I was like, okay, well, I'll just replace the synchros. I got in here. I couldn't actually get, follow the procedure properly in the, in the book to get it apart because as it turns out, half the shift fork is missing. So here's the pivot part. Here's the one side of the arm and the other one's supposed to be over here. 
See if I can show you that on this one. So this one, if you look at this, there's this whole extra section in this horseshoe shaped shift fork. Well, half of that was missing and it was just kind of hanging out down here. So I was like, oh crap, all right, well, maybe what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll grab the transmission from the parts car that I bought that only had 60,000 miles on it. Cause I do know I did put that transmission in the car and the synchros were shot. They were grinding, the gears grind. So I was like, oh crap, well, all right, well let's take this one apart and place the synchros in this one. Well, I couldn't actually get the main selector shaft out, which is this selector shaft. Um, there's an arm that goes on the end of it here. And so this slides into the transmission on one side and then the arm comes in from the other side and hooks on here. Well, I could, it was completely seized and rusted. I tried everything I could think of, including heat. And I broke two, three jaw pullers trying to get it off. And finally I said, screw it. And I just freaking cut the shaft in half. So I got that out and I thought, okay, so what we might end up doing, actually, this is the lowest mileage transmission that I have. And I thought, well, we're going to, probably just replace the synchros in this. Of course, I got to looking at it and I can see like this bearing has got, hey, see they're showing signs of heat? Or I just noticed the surface of this is like bubbling. So I'm like, well, I'm gonna have to replace this bearing probably. So I need one from one of the other ones. I oh, there's seven transmissions or six other transmissions in here, including this one for re-educating myself. Um, originally, I was gonna just buy this and use the this uh, speedometer ring gear, because that's broken in the parts car one. So uh, there's just like, we're shifting parts from one to the other all over the place, trying to find compatible stuff. And in the meantime, I wanted to figure out why the Solara transmission had problems. That car actually had problems with fourth and fifth gear and uh, it made a growling noise on deceleration, all kinds of weird things. And I was like, well, I probably should take this opportunity to try to examine all of the guts that came out of this one because I might figure out what was the problem with that in the first place, even though it's not really important for me to figure that out right now because we're just going to be selling the MR2 anyway, and this will go in an another one someday. But I you know, we don't know which one that is. But I got into it, and I started realizing that all of the stuff on this transmission some of the it's it's updated and the parts are different so if you look actually one of the biggest things that i found is this i'll show you what when i actually match it up next to one of the other shafts but as you watch my finger dip down and go across and dip back up this actual whole part of the shaft is actually a smaller diameter than the outer parts of the shaft that's very different and ultimately what i think i figured out was on the exterior of the case. I cannot even believe this happened. But I must have actually missed something 15 years ago when I did this because on the exterior of this case there's this surface here. It's like a double surface. On the inside I think is actually the 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 outside race for the bearing. The outside of this is just I don't know. I thought maybe it was uh just the way that the it's built. But turns out there's this freaking shim that's supposed to go on top of here. And this case was missing it. The Solara case, when I, I, at least I don't recall seeing it. I looked in all the little bags uh, that I have. I organize obviously everything as I take them out and label everything. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. It was missing. This particular one actually came off of the old Solara. I pulled the old Solara midsection case out. And sure enough, that shim was sitting there. So I have a feeling that's what caused everything to go wrong with this transmission and it wouldn't be like me to not follow directions but that would have been easy to miss because it's so small and the gear loop keeps it attached to the case and it, i guess it's i can't believe i missed it but i i think i did at least i can't find it anywhere um on top of that i'm looking through the instructions on how to replace the synchros in these transmissions and readjust all the bearing preload on the input shaft, the output shaft, the differential. And I don't even remember if I went to all that work all those years ago. I can't imagine I just slapped it in and didn't follow those directions, but I was following somebody's thread on the internet about 
converting the Solara transmission, of which I cannot find that thread anymore. All the, as you guys know, the forum software is all crap these days, and a lot of the history's gone. Almost all the pictures are gone. But there's like a hundred plus dollar torque wrench just for setting some of this preload that's less than five inch pounds, not five foot pounds, but five inch pounds. It's so incredibly small. I don't remember doing that 15 years ago, but so we'll do it now. And I think I may have found the problem with that Solara transmission. At least it's enough for me to feel good about making sure that when I put that all back together, all the preloads are set, the right shims are in there. The whole process is gonna require uh, a number of these shims and even uh let's see if i've got any sitting out here there's a handful of like snap rings that adjust like here um this actually see how this is i was telling you on that other shaft this is actually much larger diameter all the way through and there's a spacer that sits on top that spacer doesn't sit on the solar transmission so and this snap ring right down here that snap ring is hard to see in this light but that snap ring is varied in thicknesses there's different ones so when you replace like for example when i replace this bearing on the other one over here that we're gonna have to make sure we find the appropriate snap ring that's the right size that makes sure everything in here is set correctly because that'll become a problem so this is actually a fairly involved process as you can see with you know all of the transmissions that are open here. And the, this is really just for my learning purposes. There's the air conditioning pump getting ready to go back in the uh, MR2. And so there we go. That's a full circle lesson on the Toyota U153 transmission for the Toyota MR2. This is the Lichtenstein device, as it's called. Well, I've never seen anything like that. 2,000 volts of power from a microwave transformer into 120 volts, 120 volt outlet. It's literally burning its path through that wood. Don't touch the table. <laughs> 